Welcome to Superstitious Squirrel. Today we're going to talk about that word you are never allowed to say in a theater, Macbeth. There, I've said it, so if anything bad happens, we all know why. <laughs> no, um, it's a really long-standing superstition, and I'm going to tell you all about it. But I'm also going to refer to another superstition that's involved with Macbeth, before we get to why you can't say it. Um, the other superstition is that the play, the entire production of any Macbeth is cursed. And, and there are reasons for this, but are they valid? Let's find out. So we're going to start off with a young man named James Charles Stewart. Um, he was originally King James VI of Scotland, the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, who was forced to abdicate when James was 13 months old. That's when he became King of Scotland and later executed by Queen Elizabeth I of England. This does factor in. So James was a bit of a conspiracy theorist. He loved superstition. He loved um, all things unusual. He had a fascination with witchcraft. In fact, in 1597, the King James VI published a book called The Demonologist. It was a study of witchcraft, necromancy, demons, werewolves, vampires, and you name it, anything that had to do with that. He had a particular fascination with witchcraft, and it was part of a paranoia for him. He didn't just write about it. He actually believed in this stuff. He was also very paranoid as far as English society. And in 1603, when Queen Elizabeth died childless, um, poor James was the closest re relative to Queen Elizabeth I that could take the throne. Um, he was also the great grandson of King Henry VII, who was the King of England and the Lord of Ireland. So James became the King of Scotland, the King of England and the Lord of Ireland in 1603 and moved to England, where he adopted a young playwright as patron named Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. James was very, very supportive of Shakespeare. Remember that. It's important. Okay. Now, in 1606, an assassination attempt was uncovered called the gunpowder plot. Um, they were going to blow King James up while he was in Parliament. And um, this was pretty much the catalyst for, for when Macbeth came out. Um, uh, Shakespeare was pretty much sucking up to King James. <laughs> and he wrote it, A, to appeal to James's superstition and belief in witchcraft, and B, to help James feel like he was rightfully on the throne. See, Queen Elizabeth had never really acknowledged him as the heir. So with the, with the assassination attempt and the, 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 the beheading of his own mother, he was really incredibly paranoid in the English society. Um, a lot of Macbeth really supported the, the, the belief on Shakespeare's behalf and possibly King James's behalf that he was there with the God-given right. So we've got that. Then we add to that that um, there's, there's really strong evidence that Shakespeare did the witchcraft scenes like directly from Daemonology, which King James had written. So it, it was all written in a particular type of verse that Shakespeare didn't use. And 
the 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 witch's spells in the play were written in this different verse and they were in demonology <laughs> so the thing is though that there was a rumor started that Shakespeare actually used real spells that he had stolen from a witch's coven and that the witch's coven had found out and they cursed the play before it was ever even produced. Okay, so I'm guessing no evidence to support this at all, but I am guessing that Shakespeare himself created the rumor to make the play more exciting to the public, as well as the sucking up that he was doing to King James as his patron. So, okay, now we're getting into the superstition part. August 7th, 1606, they say that the actor Hal Barrage that was playing Lady Macbeth became feverish and died backstage and that Shakespeare was forced to take over the part because he was the only one who knew the lines. Well, did some research and on the more historical sites, they have absolutely no evidence that Hal Barrage ever existed. So there's no substantial evidence to support this rumor. I truly believe that that Shakespeare himself made it up. And as we all know, when a story is told, especially when it has a spooky background, it just grows and grows and grows and kind of becomes a platform for other stories to be told. So uh, this particular platform has a ridiculous amount of stories to go with it. I'm not going to give you all of them because <laughs> we'd be here all night and we want to keep these short, but I'm going to give you a couple that I could find no basis in and I'm going to give you a couple that will really surprise you. Now, one of the rumors that went along with the um, with the rumor that the play was cursed by actual witches was that King James the first now really hated the play, that he was offended by it, and that he banned it for five years. All evidence shows that that King James was a strong supporter of Shakespeare throughout his life. He made Shakespeare a very rich man. He was his patron, and there is some some speculation that King James the first actually commissioned Shakespeare to write the play so that he would put in the public's mind that he belonged on the throne. So I can't really support that, but this is really cool. And I think this is where the rumor started and came about. So King James the first did not ban Macbeth, but on September 6th in 1942, um, a law was passed by something called the Long Parliament. Now, let me give you a little bit of history on this too, although it'd be like a crash history. This, this You wouldn't find this in a school. Well, you'd find it in a school, just not in squirrel words. So Charles I, the son of King James I, um, he lived in a time where there was a civil war in um, in England, and the civil war was between Charles I, the king, and the Long Parliament, which was mostly made up of Puritans who felt that um, that Charles was too lax with his religion. So there was this huge civil war and Charles was killed. So on September 6th in 1942, the Long Parliament, the Puritans, they remained in power for 16 years until the monarchy was restored. Well, on September 6th, they declared that public stage plays were lascivious mirth and levity, therefore incompatible with these times of humiliation and civil war. They did not only banned Macbeth. They banned theater entirely. Imagine 16 years of no live theater. Wow. Okay, so all plays were banned, but 
<laughs> as the superstition, it's only remembered that Macbeth was banned. So big part of the curse of Macbeth, but it was all theater that was banned. So we're going to hop ahead. There's no other um, record of anything happening, and certainly not during the times that theater was banned at all. But in 1672, a production in Amsterdam, the actor playing Macbeth substituted a real dagger for the prop dagger and proceeded to kill the actor playing King Duncan in front of the live audience. So when curtain call came and Duncan didn't come out, they were like, what's going on? And supposedly they went backstage and Duncan was laying in a pool of his own blood from the dagger wound dead. That's a really good story. It's a really good story, but there is absolutely no evidence at all to support it. I could not find any actors names and even in 62, 1672 there would be some sort of word of mouth or record where that was passed along so we'd at least be able to find some sort of record you know newspaper anything but there is absolutely nothing. I think it's another thing that's just been told and retold and in the retelling. Now there were during most of the productions of Macbeth, there were some sword accidents because they had sword si sword fights, even with a blunt sword. Accidents can happen. They're they're heavy. They are somewhat pointed. You you can get killed, as you will see, or even you know wounded. So low lighting for the stage and swords involved there's going to be some accidents, okay? Now, here are some of the other rumors. Um, in 1721, at a performance, it doesn't say where, a nobleman in the audience got up in the middle of the scene and walked across the stage to talk to a friend. The actors chased him from the premises and he came back with the militia and burned the theater down. This is one of the very big rumors all over the internet. Absolutely no proof. Things are looking grim here for the, for the superstition. So <laughs> things are looking grim until, oh, until, and this one is so cool. On May 10th, 1849, there were two actors they were running uh, Macbeth at the same time, dates. So one of them was considered the greatest British actor of this time, William Charles McReady. And the other one was the first American theatrical star, Edwin Forrest. So these two had a bit of a rivalry. Um, Edward Forrest was a bit of what we would call lowbrow or commonplace. And McReady was like highfalutin, very, very fancy. And McReady was doing his his Macbeth in a place called the Astor House Theater or the Astor House Opera, Opera House. Forrest was down the street at the Broadway Theater. And at the time in 1849, you know, it was only 75 years after the war, so they, there were still a lot of unrest between the Americans and the British over the Revolutionary War. There was also a great deal of um, unrest between the classes, between the, 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 the upper class, middle class, and lower class, a lot of Irish immigrants and just lower class people in New York at the time. So this was a bit of a catalyst. Not only did you have this rivalry going on between actors to the point of where Forrest would go to McReady's um, uh, performances and have people planted in the audience to throw rocks and rotten fruit and, and boo so loud that McReady's cast had to pantomime to, to be able to do the play. They couldn't be heard. And then when McReady would, um, would perform, he would just really boost. Like there was one, one, um, one line he would say that would just get people in a 
in a froth the audience would go wild when um forrest would speak macbeth macbeth's line what rhubarb center or what purgative drug will scour these english hens he was really inciting the the violence or or yes the violence between the americans and the british and then the whole class structure so on may, may 10th when mcready did his his scene all of Forrest's friends had passed out these these flyers, said working men's, shall Americans or English rule in this city? The crew of the British steamer have threatened all Americans who shall dare to express their opinions this night at the English aristocrat opera house. We advocate no violence, but a free admission of opinion to all public men. Working men, free men, stand for your lawful rights. So they were passing out these things all over the place. So much so that the, the, the New York City police were like, okay, we can't handle this. Over 10,000 people showed up at the Astor Place Theater. And, and so they, drew, they brought in the militia. People throwing rocks, uh, people fighting, violence ensued. So when when the troops came in, they arrived at nine nine fifteen. They were jostled, they were attacked, they were injured. Finally, the soldiers lined up, and after the the crowd couldn't hear them, they kept cr warning the crowd. They opened fire first into the air, and then they opened fire point blank range into the crowd. Okay, many of those killed were bystanders, innocent bystanders, and almost all of the casualties were from the working class. Um, seven of the dead were Irish immigrants. This inflamed the city. Between 22 and 31 rioters were killed. 48 were wounded, 50 to 70 policemen were injured. This is insane. So this was all incited people say, by Macbeth. But in truth, it was really incited by civil unrest. So again, Macbeth gets blamed because it was the reason that the Astor Place was, was destroyed. Um, a New York Tribune reported, as one window after another cracked, the pieces of bricks and paving stones rattled in on the terraces and the lobbies. The confusion increased till the opera house resembled a fortress besieged by an invading army rather than a place meant for peaceful amusement of civilized community. It got out of control all the way around. Um, the Astor House did uh, survive as, as, as a building but it did not survive as a theater or opera house because the the riot was so bad that it was it renamed the astor house to the disaster house it was pretty horrible the 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 media even back then just ruined it so it then became a library that still stands to this day but it could not survive as a theater so we've got that we've got this big riot we've got all these supposed deaths um the list goes on for the deaths the list goes on and it is a long list um let me tell you a couple that really happened so Oh, wait, one more that didn't happen. Okay. One of the rumors is that in 1942 with, with John Guigland, Gilgood as Macbeth, I just really slaughtered his name, three actors, two of the witches, and Duncan died. As, and the set com designer committed suicide. So I was like, okay, I've got a date. I've got a producer. I am going to look this up. Now, didn't happen. Let me find it. It said this production of Macbeth, produced by and starring John Guigelgud, <laughs> it's spelled G I E L G U D, 
I can't even spell it right, is notorious for being particularly cursed. The story has become exaggerated over time, as most stories do. And this is a typical example. It's a 1942 production, and this is what you will find on the internet. A 1942 production starring John Gilgood holds the record for the most misfortune. Three actors died during its run, and the costume designer killed himself right after the premiere. Some of the, the, the blogs even say that one of the actors died on stage. So here are the facts as accurately as can be determined by historians. The first Duncan, Marcus Barron, suffered an attack of angina and had to quit the production. He was replaced by Nicholas Hannon. Milton Rosmer, cast as Macduff, fell ill and he was replaced by Frances Lister. One of the weird sisters, Beatrix Fielding Kay, she died in Manchester during the tour and was replaced by Dorothy Green. One death. No reason why she died. Um, Ernest was brought to brought in to replace the first witch, Jean Caldwell, when she left the production. Um, and the, the, the Piccadilly Theater was severely damaged by a German bomb. That's where it was. But it wasn't during Macbeth. And the, the production designer, John Minton, he committed suicide. He did. But it was 1957, not 1942. So here we are. We're seeing this curse that's supposedly, you know, it's like 400 years old, right? So we're seeing this curse and we're saying, well, this happened because of that curse. Bad things happen all the time, but when it's associated with something that's considered bad luck, well, <laughs> we, we tend to try to make sense of it or make the two meet. So in this case, I really don't think, oh, I promised you all some, some ones that actually happened. Okay. This is in a Thursday night performance in 1947. Actor Harold Norman was stabbed during the final sword fight in Act 5 and died of his wounds. Okay, this actually happened. I got the newspaper clip right up here for you where you can see in the newspaper his obituary, how he died and all of that. Actually true. But I think I've told you five of the whole slew of stories that I looked through. And this one is the only one that really has any basis. Another one that actually happened, and there, this wasn't a death, but in 1973, Charlton Heston starred in Macbeth in Bermuda. And the rumor is that there was a fire that broke out on the set and it went into the audience and that Charlton Heston was badly burned. And they say he was ba badly burned because his pants were accidentally soaked in kerosene. <laughs> okay, how do you accidentally soak your pants in kerosene? This I need to know. But, <laughs> but this, there is some truth to this story. But it's actually two separate stories. So during the first performance, Charlton Heston was riding around a horse on bareback on, on the East End Fort's ramparts. And he suddenly rushed off stage, pointing at his tights, just writhing in pain and screaming, get them off of me. Now, in his autobiography, he said whoever had laundered his tights had dipped them in kerosene and the sweat of the horse and the heat did cause serious burns to Mr. Heston's legs and groins. Ow. So I don't think that whoever dipped them in kerosene did it by accident. <laughs> I hope they were fired or, <laughs> or even arrested. That's a horrible thing. So that actually happened but the fire part of the story happened later on um the wooden facade of macbeth's, macbeth's castle came burning down as planned and the wind blew flames and smoke into bermuda's audience 
but nobody was injured. So it was it was like a combination of the two stories to make that bigger story, that exaggeration that made it all exciting. And let's add to the curse of Macbeth. It's so wild how these things work. So through these, there are other, you can look them up. There, there are pages and pages of stories behind the curse of Macbeth, but very, very few of them are actually have any evidence that, that support them. So, you know, always be careful what you hear, what you read, where you read it, look it up, look deeper. When you do look it up, always look deeper. And that's why this has taken me so long, <laughs> but but I really don't believe, I believe that it was started by Shakespeare and just perpetuated to make it bigger and better and more exciting. So it's it's still a very widely held superstition. You can tell people that something's not true and give them reasons. And here we've got over 500 years of running. No, as you were, we've got over 400 years of a play running bad things are bound to happen. Bad things do happen. It's just more stories are added in to make it bigger and bolder and more exciting. So that brings us to the rumor that you, you know, it's very bad luck to say Macbeth in the theater. And much of the reason is because all of the rumors behind the production of it. So is it bad luck to say Macbeth in a theater? One of the reasons that people bring up is that um, Macbeth is a highly um, popular play that any time Macbeth is put on, the, the theater is going to make a great deal of money. And it got to the point where plays or theaters that were doing poorly, they would put on a play of Macbeth so that they would bring in more income because it was, it was always going to get sold out. A, because it's a good play, and B, because of all the legend behind it. So if you said Macbeth out loud in the theater, that was acknowledging that the theater was doing poorly. And so they said that they started the bad rumor, bad luck rumor with that. I think that's too recently. I do really, really believe. And, and again, this is my belief. I believe that the, the superstition started with Shakespeare and his rumor and it, there may be some basis to the uh, doing Macbeth to make a theater's red line better. But I don't think that that's where the rumor came from. I think it's way older than that and way deeper than that. But is it bad luck to say Macbeth in a theater? <laughs> I don't know if it's bad luck or just bad judgment. <laughs> <laughs> if you see how these people react, these people will get in your face and scream at you, possibly even physically hurt you. Don't do it. I know it's tempting, but I promise you, you will be so embarrassed. How do I know this? <laughs> do you really, really think that I can go 53 years without trying it at least once? I did it in high school. and. Oh my God, they went that shit crazy. It was hysterical. But it, it doesn't matter if there's any basis in it or not. Yes, yes, it is absolute bad luck to say it in a theater because you will be at the very least embarrassed and the very most thrown out of the damn theater, <laughs> even if you're a cast member. So what do we do? if we say Macbeth in the theater by accident or by design. <laughs> Here's what you do. Leave the theater immediately. Two part. Um, a, you don't want to get mobbed. <laughs> and B, it's part of what you're supposed to do. So leave the theater immediately. Turn Clockwise has to be clockwise because that's the only way to confuse the spirits that you give bad luck, that give you bad luck. 
three times. Swear, make it a good swear word. It has to be a good swear word. Um, fart knocker does not work. Yes, it does not work. It, it can start with an F and end with a K, but knocker can't be in the middle of it. <laughs> so, okay, leave the theater, turn counterclockwise three times, swear, swear like you mean it, spit. Get that word out of your mouth and then knock on the door of the theater until those people will let you back in. And let me tell you something, you might be knocking for hours, not easily forgiven for saying the word Macbeth in a theater. So don't try it. Just don't try it. Take my, take my word on it. Don't try it. So that is not all the story behind Macbeth. And give y'all some homework and see if you can come up with some other rumors that would be really fun and leave them in the comments for us. And if you have any basis or any um, substantial evidence that supports some of the first rumors that I'd said that I couldn't find evidence on, I would love to see it. It would be a lot of fun to find out if any of these rumors are true. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And don't you be missing any superstitious squirrels. And if you want a special episode on a particular superstition that you love, that you're curious about, or you follow, please, please leave a link in the comments below and let me know what you want me to look up. I will see you next week on Superstitious Squirrels.